that on? Yes. I think you're on. Okay. We'll see what we'll see. You know, I was tempted to just to sing happy birthday to the church while we were waiting, but then Rex Ann was out there, so we didn't. We don't do well as a cappella. Uh, and, you know, we have the balloons around and all the symbols of happy birthday, and they are significant. And uh, even the, the wild geese are very significant. Uh, in the early Celtic churches, the Holy Spirit was depicted as coming to the people as wild geese instead of the peaceful dove that we often think about. And I'll give you some reasons for that later on. But it's always great that to have the tribe of Dan visit with us and see how they're going to bring the various seasons of the scripture to life and what we celebrate. But when you stop and think about it, Pentecost Sunday is probably not given as much due as it ought to be given by worshipers in the Christian faith. My guess is, well not my guess, my thought is, that it is at least one of the three top days in the liturgical year for Christians. First day, obviously, would be probably Christmas, when we celebrate the birth of our Savior. Easter, where we celebrate that Savior's death and resurrection into heaven and to new life for all of us. Pentecost Sunday is where he breathes his life into the disciples. He breathes his life into the church. And therefore, it is actually the beginning of the Christian church on Pentecost Sunday. And so it is worthy of celebrating that day. But the key word that I want to get out of this whole service is the word Spirit. Because it is the Holy Spirit that He gives to us on this day. But it is the Spirit that He gave to us and to the church. And what we need today in the church is Spirit. We need Spirit. We need enthusiasm. We need love. And all of these things are encompassed by that one simple terminology, Holy Spirit. I wonder if you've ever gotten so excited, just so excited you just absolutely could not contain yourself. You saw something happen or you were a part of something that happened on a particular day and you just couldn't contain yourself. And you just wanted to jump up and shout for joy. There are some people, unfortunately, who have never had that experience in their life. They never seem to get excited. And they're always suspicious of people who do. My wife would sometimes tell you that I don't get very excited and I don't get very emotional, but I think I do. She doesn't. You might say that there are some people, and she might categorize me in that class, who are excitement challenged. And there is a great deal of difference of opinion among Christians with regard to how much excitement we ought to show in worship. Now, disciples, we just don't show a lot of excitement and a lot of enthusiasm during worship. Somebody, as they left worship a week or so ago, said, you know, preacher, this morning you were so right on target. There were a couple of times I wanted to get up and just shout, Amen! And I said, well, you know, that wouldn't have hurt my feelings a bit. In fact, most preachers 
are just tickled to death to know that somebody out there is listening. So it would have been okay with me, but you know, as disciples, we uh, don't give free reign to outbursts of enthusiasm. Those who do give that outburst of enthusiasm are generally called, well, those are those Pentecostals, as if that's not a good word, that's not a good thing to be Pentecostal. Uh, most of our so-called mainline churches are more reserved. And some of the churches that are Pentecostal are oftentimes looked down upon. Uh, in fact, there was some concern about the church that is buying us because they are very Pentecostal, as if that's bad. They just like to worship God in joy. And uh, I think we should all know that that very first Pentecost Sunday was probably a very joyous event, probably very exciting just to think of your Lord and Savior coming in and the fire off of the heads of the shoulders and breathing the breath of life into you when you thought he was dead. How could you not be excited over something like that? And you know, Pentecost was actually a Jewish festival to begin with. To the Hebrews, it was known as the Festival of Weeks. The word Pentecost comes from the Greek word meaning 50. And so the, the festival of Pentecost uh, began 50 days after Passover. And the festival was always celebrated in Jerusalem. And the Jews poured in from all over the known world in order to share in the festivities of the festival of weeks. And the scriptures tell how the festival of weeks was to be celebrated. They describe it in Leviticus 23 and Deuteronomy 16. Each person was supposed to bring a special gift to God on that day, a very special gift. And it was to be in proportion to the blessing that the Lord had given to them. Gee, think of what would happen if we did that today in our modern worship each person would be required to bring a very special super gift to god not to the church but to god and on that day all daily work was set aside and the people were to gather in worship and the key word they were to rejoice in their worship it's interesting to know who was invited to that worship, to that celebration of the Jews. It's in the scripture, it says, your sons, your daughters, your men servants, your maid servants, the Levites in your town, you know, those that you normally don't associate with, the aliens, the fatherless, and the widows living among you. Boy, that's a whole bunch of people. And I don't think you can find anybody in society that would have been excluded. No wonder Jerusalem was so overcrowded on Pentecost's day. No wonder there were so many different languages being used. There is as much diversity in that day in Jerusalem as you are ever likely to get in Jerusalem on any one day throughout the year. In other words, that was the perfect time for the Holy Spirit to descend upon the church. It was a time to bring a whole new era into the life and the history of humankind. It would be an era like no other it would transcend national borders. All were invited, not just those within the community. It would transcend every known language. People from all languages throughout the known world were there on that day. 
it would ultimately draw together people who had other variables from society. It would draw together all of those without regard to gender, to color, to economic status. All of those variables that had been used to divide people then and now. The Spirit of God descended on these people in order to start a church. Start a church which was the lead up to the founding of the kingdom of God. And the symbolism that they use in the scriptures is so rich. A violent wind, tongues of fire, people hearing and understanding in their own language, observers utterly amazed. This is what happens when the Spirit comes. Our world is shaken. Our senses come alive. We know that we stand on holy ground. Oftentimes in our generation and our understanding of the scriptures and love, the image of the dove is used to portray the Holy Spirit. The image is that when you hear the Spirit descending like a heavenly dove on you, as it says, you hear harps and strings and you hear peaceful, restful, relaxing music and you get that relaxing feeling when this, it says the spirit of dove, the dove has come upon you. And you see, that's the way some people think about worship. They think we should be about softly playing music and that peaceful, relaxing, restful feeling of worship. Well, one preacher did discover that the Celtic Christians use a goose as their symbol of the Holy Spirit. And that changes the whole image from that peaceful, relaxing dove flowing down to a goose honking loudly and creating a lot of clatter. <coughs> that noise shaking up a crowd. Maybe the Celtics thought the Spirit had come, the Holy Spirit had come to shake them up, shake them out of their complacency. Maybe that's what we need today, to be shaken from our sanctuaries, to go out into the streets. It's so easy to use the church as a retreat as an escape from reality, a place for comfort and peace. And we can get so comfortable in our place that we forget the real world is really on the outside. The real world that Christ called us to live in, the real world that he asked us to love others and to share peace and joy and justice. Christ called us to serve the whole world for which he died. Worship is supposed to be that time when we strengthen our spirits in order to be of more service in the world. When worship becomes an end in and of itself, we are not being what Christ has called us to be. We need to be shaken from our sanctuaries and into the streets. We need to be shaken from our safe relationship and into contact with people out there who need Christ. You know, one of the reasons that people list why they come to church is they develop and maintain friendships, and that's good that allows us to build up one another. 
and to have support from a Christian community. But what happens if we restrict our friendships only to the people at church? How can we then be the salt to those not in the church? How can we be the leaven to those not in the church? In order for us to have our impact on the world, we need to have contact with people who are in the world. There are all kinds of people around you and all kinds of people around me who have all kinds of different needs. But how will we know what those needs are if we don't get to meet those people? See, we need to be shaken from our sanctuaries and into the streets. We need to be shaken from our safe relationships and into contact with the people out there who need Christ. We need to be shaken from a nominal faith to one that has real impact in the world. Here is where the wild goose Pentecost can help us most of all. Many of us can get in a rut spiritually. Our faith has become routine or perhaps for some even quite anemic. We go through the motions, but our heart may not really be in it. We need to reclaim that fire, the fire of the Pentecost. When the Holy Spirit came upon the followers of Christ in Jerusalem on that first Pentecost, they were totally shaken out of their complacency and apathy Suddenly they understood. They understood the mission that Christ had for them and they embraced it. They became a force to be reckoned with from that small band that gathered together to this large numbers of people around the world that call themselves Christians came from that very day when they were shaken out of their apathy and they went out into the world. They became a fellowship unlike any fellowship that has ever been known before. And they became determined. They were determined to raise high the banner of Christ for their generation and for ours. And that's what we need. We need it like they did. Let's pray that the Holy Spirit will come over us like a wild goose and it will make such a racket that we will be shaken out of our pews and out into the streets to show people what they can have when they find Christ right here in McAllen, Texas. Amen.